Hello, I'm Lux, and I have a house to sell you, and look at these wonderful creatures. And I'm Ember, help, I'm trapped in Gravity Falls. <laughs> oh. And this is our thoughts on Gravity Falls, episodes 11 through 15. And as you can tell, my voice is better. <laughs> and as you can tell from us playing around in the intro, I'm still enjoying the series. <laughs> So, what was your favorite episode out of these five? I bet I could guess. Summerween, because Halloween is awesome. Yes. <laughs> and it fits because summer, i.e. August, is when the stores start putting out all the Halloween merchandise. And they need an excuse to do a Halloween episode in Gravity Falls. Problem is it all takes place during the summer. Yes, so Summerween. Should we start with that one or actually go back to... Unless that was the first episode, I can't remember the first No, the first one was the one with the shrink ray and Gideon. So now that we've told everyone what my favorite is, we can go chronological. Because otherwise, this will be the Summerween recording. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not even summer. Well, someday in the future, if someone's listening to this archived, it might be. But live. Air quotes. Live. No. No, it's not summer. <laughs> Though it is very warm out today. And very bright. Oy vey. Yeah. I think Lux has that uh, geek thing of being slightly allergic to sunlight. It's not slightly allergic. I catch on fire when I go outside. Please be a vampire. Please be a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Shrink Ray. That was fun. Because I wasn't thinking about taking the crystal back and using it. I was just thinking, oh, walk through the light beam that's already there. Also, take the mountain lion home. It's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> it's adorable. And it's cute enough that you could actually put it in an atrium in the mystery shack. And it wouldn't cause any problems. Like in, I think it was in this set of episodes with the troll. Yes, because that was too big and too scary. Mm -hmm. But a miniature kitten? Come on. Mm -hmm. A miniature mountain lion. Look at this thing. How much would you pay to take a picture with it? Ten? Twenty? Two hundred dollars? I hear two hundred dollars! <laughs> <laughs> and my voice just cracked there just like Dipper. Mm-hmm. Dipper remix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad he listened to the whole remix when we get there. But, yeah. So, really, that much bickering with Mabel and Dipper? Like, it's a millimeter. And okay, you're twins, that doesn't mean you're identical in every way. Mm hmm Especially since they're not identical twins. Yeah. So, it was like, really? It's one millimeter. You guys are making something out of nothing. And then poor Seuss accidentally feeding into it when he was trying to be nice and he just made a different pun. And yes, in the set of episodes, I finally realized that I was mispronouncing his name the entire time. Yeah, it's actually... Zeus. No, Zeus. Nah. Now I've got Lux doing it. It's Zeus with an S. S-O-O-S -O -O -S, as opposed to Zeus, the Greek god, which is how I've been pronouncing it the entire time. But it gets spelled out twice in this set of episodes. So if I had any doubt that I was wrong, it was there in writing. Once in Broken Mirrors and once in the high score on the pinball machine. Yeah, but it sounds like Zeus as the other characters say it. Mm-hmm. So, yes, and another episode with Gideon. Yep. Always fun. And the continuous, I'm going to take over the mystery shack. I'm going to take the mystery shack. I'm going to have Mabel forever, but I'm also going to threaten her. And, wow, all those broken mirrors. Gideon, lots of bad luck there. And I was waiting for Gideon to hit himself with the shrink ray with all those mirrors. I mean, it was right there waiting to happen. Mm-hmm. And just Stan's reaction after he starts getting tickled like a kid. Um. <laughs> Dude, I really, why don't you just go home? And this is another example of how they give us the lead-in. We find out early in the episode that Gideon is very ticklish and hates being tickled. And then later in the episode, Mabel and Dipper are able to use that. Mm-hmm. But what a sacrifice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, th that's love there. <laughs> and then there's poor Zeus. Zeus, it's poor Zeus. <laughs> hey guys! Uh oh, 
uh, glue? Yeah, lots yeah, of glue. Lots of glue. I'm like, um, just go back and get another crystal. I mean, there were a lot of them. And also just watching more of Gideon's family dynamic. <laughs> He's still, God, the one in charge. And, you know, his father, used car salesman. Okay, so we had to come up with something that was equivalent to how Crooked Stan is. So used car salesman uh, is pretty close. It, it's really a toss-up who, who is the bigger crook. The poor mother. I, I wonder what happened that made Gideon so in control. Well, for one thing, I'm sure the talisman. Two, he's bringing in most of the money through the Temple of Telepathy because that they had that sign up outside the house. This is where Gideon lives, as seen on TV. So he's the one bringing in all the money, plus he has supernatural powers, and he has the second journal. Mm. And so... I, I would probably be with the mother. Just keep vacuuming. Just keep vacuuming. <laughs> yeah. Ignore everything. Just keep vacuuming. Uh, actually, more, I'd probably be like, uh, yeah, I'm out of here. You guys have fun. <laughs> yep. All right. Now on to more important things. Summerween. <laughs> so what would you think of the legend? That was fun. And I almost thought when the Summerween prankster showed up, that it was all going to be harmless, that it was just going to be to make Dipper, you know, reconnect and enjoy, you know, the last little bit of Halloween that he could have before he gets too old for the traditional costume and candy type of Halloween, which is kind of my favorite type of Halloween. I don't really like the adult party scary horror Halloween. I like the fun dress up, walk around. Yeah, I, I would like to just dress up and walk around and... Not, you know, knock on doors, but I don't need the candy part. I would just knock and go, hi, how you doing? Having a good night? Being safe? Check out my costume. No candy needed. Bye. Yeah, apparently I need to go back to Disneyland one more time. Because if you go in October, adults are allowed to dress up and trick or treat. Nice. I, I didn't think I ever wanted to go back because the last time I went, when I was still a kid, it was so ridiculously crowded. But sanctioned adult trick-or-treating i mean i'm short enough that i with a mask i could actually get away with it and lux could be my adult chaperone <laughs> i wonder if we'd end up with matching costumes i don't know but you would be playing the adult so i don't know if you'd want to be in costume at all mm. i would love to be in costume i like cosplaying i do too and you know it was just I could really relate to Dipper in this episode because I stopped trick-or-treating way before I wanted to because I felt I was getting too old. Mm. I still had friends in the same age group who were trick-or-treating when I stopped. Mm. I can't remember when I actually stopped trick-or-treating. I think I stopped trick-or-treating less because I wanted to and more because our area where we used to trick-or-treat kind of just dried up, as it were. People moved away. People didn't give out candies. To drive out to where the people were, to actually do trick-or-treating was kind of things so we had to drive all over the mountains where i lived yes uh lux has spent most of his life in the middle of nowhere literally there's a sign that says the middle of nowhere population four hmm. <laughs> yes which is probably why lux likes gravity falls it's like being home <laughs> <laughs> ow ow keep the gloves up what? A little Summerween prank. <laughs> Speaking of which, back to the episode. Yes, well, I really like the design of the prankster monster, because the very beginning, when he first showed up, it looked more like Chacon from the old Genesis game. And then later with the whole eating thing, it was like No Face from mm -hmm. Spirited Away. And then the final form, you know, where we actually saw the candy... Reminded me of something else, but I can't quite place it. Hmm. And also, that kind of hurt. Loser candy? I happen to like saltwater taffy, and I liked candy corn up until the point it was too sweet for me. I'll give you the black licorice. I'm not a licorice fan, but... Yeah. Well, how my candy usually ended up when I was, you know, eating through the candy is, basically, I'd eat all the soft candy, and then move on to stuff like that. I didn't really appreciate hard candies until I got older and realized you can just stick them in your mouth and let them melt. I always wanted to eat something really quickly. So that's why I like the soft candies. So I could like munch, 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 absolutely just munch on it and taste it and go, mmm, chocolate. Um, 
And I usually just save the hard candies for last because like, ugh, hard candies. Oh, I was always doing trading. There were certain things that all of us wanted. So, you know, there were absolutely no trades on Butterfingers, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Those were my top two. And then Almond Joys, there was some wiggle room because not everybody liked almonds. So I could sometimes get Almond Joys in trade. Oh, me and my brother used to do trading too. I think everybody does trading if they're allowed to actually eat their trick-or-treating candy. Yeah, the only thing we didn't trade was the fact that we were lucky enough when we were younger to live in an area where people gave out money. And I'm not, and I'm not talking about pennies and stuff like that. No, these were usually half dollars, dollar coins, actual dollars, 25 cents, you know, the large amounts. It didn't start getting kind of pincy until I got older, then they were... This is a penny. Lady, this is a penny. The cardboard it's on is worth more than this penny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but back to the summer weed and they finally go out and do the trick-or-treating and Dipper's not in costume. I love how Lazy-Eyed Susan like gives them all one piece of candy. The groups that are all into it are getting like mountains of candy and they're getting one piece each. Also, I love that she was dressed up as a giant yarn ball further cementing her role as Crazy Cat Lady. Mm -hmm. Though I do think it was a bit unfair to punish the rest of them for just Dipper. Well, you are known by who you know. Birds of a feather flock together. If one member of your team isn't into it, why do you even have him along? Chaperone. He could have played that, and that would have been the line that I would have taken. Instead of going, what? This is a great costume. No, I would have gone, no, I'm chaperone this year. And then they would have all gotten mountains of candy and he wouldn't have gotten any. But that was still creepy at the end with Seuss eating the loser candy that was sentient. But the loser candy was happy because all he ever wanted was to be told he tasted good. God, that is creepy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love how Zeus even comments on the fact that it's just kind of creepy and weird, but it tastes good. Yeah, he's like, uh, the crying is kind of strange, but hey, I'm still eating. Mm-hmm. And yeah, crying candy corn tears, also having candy corn teeth, which I guess that's part of the reason they had to put candy corn into the loser category, except that I've also heard that despite the huge amounts of candy corn bought every year, it is one of the most hated Halloween candies. It's pure sugar in the shape of a triangle. And it's chewy. I love candy corn. I still do. Don't need it that much, but hey. Uh, I can't. It's too sweet anymore. Same with Butterfingers. It's so sad. Mm. Uh, so that was really fun, and I, I like the closing, where they were all together, and yeah, you know, the true meaning of Halloween. Celebrating pure evil. And then Zeus comes in with, yeah, I ate a man tonight. Ah, <laughs> uh. uh, But moving on, because there are three other episodes. Yes, yes, there are. Yes, so now we have the classic uh, Trading Places episode. Uh, I can do this better than you. No, you can't. I could do better on vacation than you could do actually running this. Mmm, yes. Which was so close to being true. You mean the fact that Stan almost won all that money? Yes, and that if he had stopped, he could have at least had half of it. And if he could bring himself to say the word, please, which now, once again, I need to go back and watch all the other episodes to see if he's ever said it sarcastically or otherwise. Because as soon as they showed where he went, I was like, oh, wow, yeah, he's going to rake in a ton of money. But I know how this trope goes. Mabel has to win. So how is she going to win? Because he's really, really good at this game. Mm-hmm. I love how when he's in line going, oh, this is taking too long. Oh, I'll just use my old old man. <laughs> Powers. Yeah, I love how the guy sees through it, through it, but he goes, I love how attention-seeking this guy is. We gotta have him on this show. <laughs> yes, it's like this man is selfish, greedy, and attention-seeking. Get him on television. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how TV seems to work anymore. Mm-hmm. And then when, shower of money. No, no, don't take off. You don't have to take off. Go to Go to commercial. commercial. Go to commercial. <laughs> Ah. Uh. And then Mabel, what have I become? You became what you had to, Mabel. 
Yeah, it, maybe it was just a little painful to watch that whole 1983 management style, you know, right down to the shoulder pads. Because, you know, that, that was women going into the workplace then. Okay, we got to match up to the men. Okay, we got to gear up. It was like you were putting on football gear to ready, going onto the gridiron to take on the men in the office world. Mm-hmm. Being nice w does work. In the workplace, you just have to be nice in the right way. She was being too nice. She was like, you can bring people over because I want you to be happy. No, you should say you can have people over on your breaks. But while you're working, please focus on your work. Yeah, it was just that she didn't, she wanted to be so different from Stan that she went too far the other way. Because being polite does pay off. And it was just that Wendy was a really good manipulator there. Yeah, she's always a really good manipulator. Mm-hmm. But the things that she allowed Zeus and Dipper to do were both good ideas. Just, Zeus, I could have sworn that in your drawing, the rest of your costume included your regular clothes. Mm-hmm. But I do like how they used that at the end of the episode. Human man, baby! I don't know what I am. Am I a... <laughs> am I this? Am I that? These are legitimate questions. <laughs> Still better than the wolf boy suit, because, I mean, while dressing Dipper up as a werewolf is okay, but if the fur is actually making him ill, that's kind of a problem. And I like the realization that Dipper has that, oh, real magic just freaks people out. This is going too far. It's like, yeah, you're not showing people real magic. You're entertaining them, especially the tourists. I mean, you should put up a mirror in there and go, if you look into this, you can see someone you may have never seen before. <laughs> and you make sure it's one of those slightly distorted mirrors. So when you look in, everything's kind of distorted. <gasps> <Huh>? <laughs> I still like the, if you, put your money, if you put your money in this bag, it will disappear. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yes, and also the only known picture of a horse riding another horse. Hmm. Just let you think about that one for a moment. Yeah, especially from an adult perspective. Please go over to Ember's reading room. <laughs> <laughs> there you will find Ember's thoughts. Ember's thoughts on books from her childhood, from an adult perspective. Plug. Check. Yeah, well, you know, the Mystery Shack is all about shameless promotion. Mm hmm I mean, really, they just make stuff up. But, you know, that was... God, was it Barnum and Bailey or Ringling Brothers? I'm trying to remember who was the original Sharpster, the one who came up with rain checks because they got like live whales, but they put them in freshwater and they died. And they were like, okay, so tell people because of the rain, we can't show them the whales, but we'll give them this check. <laughs> I don't know who that is. I remember seeing part of the movie, you know, a dramatization at one point. Uh. But I couldn't tell you which sharpster it was. Maybe we should just ask Google. <laughs> Perhaps. And just seeing Mabel fully take on Stan's grumpy managerial role and Dipper dive into the swindler role. Mm, which he did very well. Yeah, uh, he looked pretty good in the getup. Mm -hmm. I liked how Stan was like, oh, he finally learned how to dress. <laughs> Dude, Stan, that's harsh. The hat he wears is from your shop. Do you think he likes that stuff from his shop? <laughs> Probably not. He just has it because he can sell it. But yeah, they, Mabel barely squeaked by with winning. And they both learned a lesson. You can't be completely nice, and you shouldn't be completely mean. And wow, really? 30 plus takes on the apology song and dance? <laughs> It's a punishment, and it's a bet, so yeah, you gotta milk that for all it's worth. Yeah, especially since she was only cashing in on part of the bet, because the other part was her managing the shack for the rest of the summer. Mm-hmm. Which nobody wants. Mm-hmm. And Sen actually does a pretty good job at, ma at managing that place. Well, yeah, because he doesn't care about being liked, so he's able to keep everyone in line. And Seuss is so accommodating. All right, so moving on now to what would probably boil down to a clip show if we had actually seen any of the footage before. So some little short vignettes while falling through a bottomless pit. Yeah, because it doesn't really have a bottom. You just end up coming back out the way you went in. So, hmm, 
I guess the stuff Stan has thrown in there before comes out later when he's not there and gets blown away by the wind. So he never realizes that stuff just comes back out. Mm hmm. So technically, anything you throw in there is littering. Mm hmm. Though the only slight problem with the episode is Dipper or Mabel says after they've come back out of the hole that no time has passed. And if that's true, when Stan falls in there, he'd pop back out immediately. But he doesn't. Yeah, so when they say no time has passed, do they mean like not a significant amount of time? Or like, oh, it's been less than five minutes? Or literally, it's been two seconds? Because mm -hmm. if it's literally been two seconds, Stan should have popped right back out. They're going, God, that took forever. And everyone goes like, you were just barely gone, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Instead, they have time to go, ah, he'll be all right, and walk off. Mm -hmm. But now into the actual vignettes. Mm -hmm. Which one is your favorite? I think actually the pinball one. That one was also my favorite too. Maybe because Zeus. Yeah. Just, he's a lovable big guy. Yeah, and really, okay, first you cheated to get the high score. And then, okay, I know every inch of this game. Yeah, you've been playing it for four years and you haven't beat any of the high scores. But hitting that button erases all the high scores. What's the big deal? Because once you erase it, you are the first one to play the game, and you automatically get the high score. Yeah, I was going to say, why don't you just play the game again after you reset it? You automatically have the high score, and you can do it legally. I mean, all you have to do is hit the bumper once and hit one thing and get a score of five. And you're instantly the high score. <laughs> but no, first let's all three of you cheat together, and then play the penalty game. Which, that was some really nice animation in there on the pinballs. Mm-hmm. And they didn't really use much CG at all for assistance, because usually when they do stuff like this, those pinballs will be rendered in 3D, but they're actually 2D in this episode. They're, they're not cheating by making them a 3D objects. They're actually 2D being scaled. Yeah, so I think it blends in much better that way. Mm -hmm. Though it stood out to me because I was expecting one thing and got the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very noticeable in the fact of, ooh, shiny. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, oh, this breaks it. But breaks is really Zeus. Um, tavern winch, one dimensional, and you're still. Come on! I don't think he has much experience with real women. I don't think he has much experience, period. Go back to the dance party episode, and he's looking at the dot. You know, he's told, hey, go look at that. Oh, hey, this dot does not disappoint. And the Dipper clones later are like, Zeus is going to get tired of that dot eventually, and you hear her in the background, NEVER! <laughs> yeah, so easily amused and not very experienced. Mm -hmm. And like I said, doesn't have much experience with women. Women that he doesn't know and work with, just to correction, so I'm not insulting Wendy. Yeah, well, Wendy and Mabel, because he's been around Wendy for longer, but Mabel's been there since they got dropped off. And almost a teenager, so. Uh, and Dipper's voiceover. <laughs> I love how everyone kept hitting him. Yeah. Like, oh, you're not Dipper. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'll save you from that possessing creature that... No, really, it's me. No, it's not! <laughs> I love how that was instantly everyone's reaction. Uh, also, old man McGucket. Mm-hmm. Like, just because he can build giant robots doesn't mean that you should be trusting him and drinking strange potions. And speaking of that, poor Stan. Especially since that was the permanent one. Except apparently it wasn't. Present? Considering Stan had his normal voice during the whole vignette episode. Mm-hmm. And wow, that was just a painful voice to get. And that they took the effort to add in the visual movements that stereotypically go with that type of voice. Mm-hmm. That was a little of the, I'll be back after these messages. Why did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> because you sound like a voiceover announcer, Dipper. And we now welcome you to Lux and Ember's Thoughts on Gravity Falls. <laughs> All right. Ah, there come the brooms. <laughs> oh, and Mabel and truth-telling and lying. That was just... Ooh. 
joke. Yeah, I can see the truth teeth forcing you to speak the truth every time you open your mouth, but the constant flow of truthful words mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. I mean, it should be every time that you would speak anyways, not that you're constantly saying everything with absolutely no filters. Mm hmm And he also speaks his thoughts. I just sit here sometimes, ponder. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I wouldn't think that truth teeth would force your inner monologue to become vocalized. Hmm. Well, maybe that's the catch on those. It's not only the truth, but it's also anything that may be perceived as the truth. Considering that the truth actually isn't the truth. Truth is a funny thing. Kind of like lies. Yes, a lot of things are susceptible to our own personal filters and interpretations. Mm -hmm. This is why I never tell a lie is instantly a lie. Even if you've never told a lie in your life. Because at some point you're going to lie about something without even realizing it. Because it's hard to know everything, so you're probably wrong on something. And that's just my own personal philosophy. My own personal philosophy. So, let's get back into the episodes. <laughs> yeah, so that one was kind of hard, but interesting to find out that the teeth were what was in the box. Mm -hmm. All things considered, I would have put Gideon's creepy love letters in that box. Mm -hmm. Or set them on fire. Probably set them on fire. Yeah, I'll also sing some type of ancient chant that, that prevents curses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, burning some sage and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in the scheme of things, nor if we hadn't watched Gravity Falls, we would think that the stories Seuss, Mabel, and Dipper told were all fictional. But because we've watched Gravity Falls, we know that those were all true things. And then Stan comes up with his incredibly lame story. Yeah, like Saturday morning cartoons kind of lame story. Bad Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, good point. Uh, Actually, more like an after school special. Yes, because it was like, oh, I didn't think old people were worth anything, but you sure taught us something, Mr. Pines. <laughs> and you won this giant trophy. And you have a robot. And there's this beautiful lady. Hi! <laughs> yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Just no. Which was really a shame, because if you look at the intro, it looks like Stan can tell a pretty good story if you get in front of a campfire. Because it looked like he was telling a pretty good story in the intro. But this, just, no. Also the, oh, hey, how about some card tricks? Cards all float away. Ta-da! <laughs> Good cover, Stan. Good cover. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then Mabel's first kiss. Finally. So, yes, how many various male supernatural creatures is Mabel going to run into? <laughs> as many as she possibly can. Yes. It's like... He's mysterious. Ah, I see you're enamored. Go to him. <laughs> yeah, because you're not being creepy at all, Mabel. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Your hair is so... I know. I'm like, oh my god, you guys are combing each other's hair in the pool and... Oh, personal space? <laughs> yeah. Also, he gave up that secret really quickly. To pace out the episode correctly, he had to, and it still works in the Gravity Falls environment, so. Yes, yes it does, but it was just, she was basically like, tell me your secret. He's like, okay. Uh, but the way he does it, it's so soap opera-like. Yes, well, a little bit of a soap opera voice, and then, oh my god, you can play one chord, at least one chord on the guitar. <laughs> it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Also, pool jail. Solitary confinement in the drain. <sighs> yeah. So I'm pretty sure he knew that Mermando was a merman. Mm-hmm. Because he's probably been there before Mermando. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that pool guy. That pool guy. How is he allowed to run a pool? <laughs> How is Stan allowed to be in charge of young children? Hmm. Good point. But still, I trust Stan more than that guy. Uh, that that guy is like ultra military type traumatized, but they made it all pool themed. Mm -hmm. I lost my hand to the pool filter! Well, that's theoretically possible if you got it caught in the intake, because I've heard of people getting things caught in the intake. Yeah, so 
yes, and also pools can be very dangerous. That's why you need the lifeguards. That's why you're not supposed to run. No horseplay. All the usual stuff. And Wendy abusing her position again. Yeah. It's like, really? And Dipper, why are you going along with this? I mean, a little bit of pranking I can see for fun's sake. But Dipper, you're not a rule breaker overall. It's Wendy. I know. A bad influence on him. He's a nice boy. <laughs> I like you. You sound like one of those women going, he's such a nice boy. He needs to stop hanging out with those people. <laughs> That's exactly why I said it that way. <laughs> ah. You notice she was out at the pool and no Roddy. Hmm. So apparently not everyone in Gravity Falls goes to the pool when it's a hundred million degrees. Mm -hmm. Oh, and something you brought up outside of conversation, we were doing some side discussion about this. They rebuilt Wax Stan. And he melted. So apparently it never got that hot in Gravity Falls in the entire amount of time that Stan had the wax figures because there's no way the room the figures were stored in was air conditioned. I just remembered why they wouldn't have melted. Apparently, they, other than the fake candle and the poker, I'm guessing they're magical, so the heat from that doesn't melt them, but the heat from the sun and those other objects do. So maybe the heat, overall heat in that room, didn't melt them. But if they were in the sun, whoopsie. Yeah, and since we've already seemed to have established that the melting takes away whatever curse animates them, then the wax stand wouldn't have that protection because he was remade out of wax that was already melted by the sun. Mm -hmm. At least that's my theory anyways, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, Mabel's was the main story for that episode, but we had stuff going on with Dipper and Wendy. We had Zeus in his quest to free the inflatable duckies, and Stan's ongoing contest with Gideon. Yes, yeah, Stan's ongoing feud with Gideon. <laughs> yes. I mean, really, you broke into the pool so that you could claim the chair, and then you have to lay there for 15 hours before the chair is usable, and you still say this is a great plan. Mm-hmm. Of course, then you found out he put glue on it. So how would you have sat on it afterwards, or it's just the fact that he'll be stuck to it? I was like, kids, get the spatulas! Calling back to the morning. Yeah. Of the first day of get the spatulas. And then he has the board still stuck to his back. Watch out for random wildfires. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm guessing that if Stan didn't sit on the chair, Gideon wouldn't have sat on it. Or he would have had something that would undo the glue. Because how long does that glue take to dry that Gideon was able to do that before Stan got there and mm -hmm. still get him stuck? Well, maybe it's one of those glues that once it dries it's not that sticky but when you lay on it and something wet comes in contact with it it automatically adheres or one of those ones where heat melts it mm. so the body heat of stan laying there all that time that's a good point but still it's like how did gideon even get it the first time because stan started with putting the property of stan towel on it that's dibs even with gideon sitting in it so it was only because he got thrown in pool jail for picking Gideon up that he lost that first round. Because the towel was dibs. Mm -hmm. Myself, I would have told Zeus to, would you mind picking him up or shooing him or just sitting on the chair? <laughs> that would get Gideon to move. Yeah. Because there's enough room for two people to sit on that chair if one of them is Gideon. Mm -hmm. But if Zeus sits on there far enough back, ooh, poor Gideon. <laughs> That's what I would have said. Hey, Zeus, sit in this chair. And, like, somehow block it so you didn't see that Gideon was still in there, and Zeus would go, boom! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's how I would get people out of my seat, usually. You know, me and my brother. Fighting over things. Politely flying over things. We never really got into fights, me and my brother. You're too laid back to get into a fight. Eh, I've gotten into a few in my life. When I mean a few, I mean, like, three. <laughs> yeah. And then I also have to wonder... Well, this episode of Gravity Falls is like, is Free Willy still that popular of a movie, or is that image so cliched, or was that truly a callback because by this point they know that P 
people who would have watched Free Willy as a kid are watching Gravity Falls. I I'm thinking it's all of the above. Probably. Especially since Gravity Falls was written as a actual family show. So it has jokes in it for everyone, not just the little kids. Mm -hmm. It's also one of those shows that hides stuff in it. And I'm not just talking about the random clues <laughs> to a mystery. They hide really good lessons underneath all the fun and games, you know, which is the proper way to do it. Which is also why the shows are so freaking popular. Because to be able to do that properly, you have to write things well. Yes, because the whole thing is to learn things when you don't actually think you're learning. Because they incorporate better. If you take something and set it aside and go, this is a lesson. But if you go, oh, interesting. Things only went this way because this happened. So I should behave like this. Because I don't want this to happen. So what are your final thoughts on these episodes so far? And maybe even a little bit about the series so far. Well, you know I'm enjoying the series because we're still watching it and I'm gushing enough and going over enough detail that people are probably running away mid-recording. <laughs> There's a lot of really interesting stuff here. I know I'm missing out on some of the overarching stuff. I still haven't gone and looked at any of the ciphers or end credit clues. Yes, I am at least noticing the changes in the title sequence, but I'm not getting the overarching clues, and I'm kind of having fun not knowing. It's like I'd kind of rather be surprised this time, and then go back and recheck everything. This is probably a good thing to do. All the clues are hints at what's happening in the future. And considering the way I can uh, extrapolate data sometimes, mm -hmm. I'm probably better off not knowing until afterwards. Yep, here's this off-color pixel. This is what I predict for the future. How did you get that from the off-color pixel? It's a single pixel. How did you predict the end of the show? He's only slightly exaggerating. Yep, yep, only slightly. Uh, I'm just loving the reactions as I watch her watch the show. <laughs> and, and no, people, I'm not doing it in the creepy way. I'm not seeing the going, hey. No, I'm watching the show with her. I should say re-watching the show because I enjoy it too. And every once in a while, I'm like, I hear her, and start laughing and stuff like that. Not like that. I'm just... Please don't try to impersonate me, <laughs> especially in front of the audience. But yeah, it's great hearing her laugh, hearing her reactions, hearing her go, oh. Like, oh, you didn't see that coming. This is, I can predict things. I'm trying not to. <laughs> it's kind of like going in to watch Pacific Rim, where we're like, yeah, but that doesn't work. I, no, no, turn off your brain. Just enjoy the action. Yeah, that was basically Pacific Rim. It's like, ah, no, nope, brain starting back up. Turn it off. <laughs> Just watch the pretty picture. Ah, uh, giant robots fighting giant monsters. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, I'm re-enjoying the series along with Ember, and I can't wait for her to watch more. And this has been our thoughts on Gravity Falls, episodes 11 through 15. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please consider subscribing, leaving a comment, sharing with your friends, and checking out other videos. If you'd like to see more of Lux's art, you can find it on Tumblr, DeviantArt, and Twitter. If you'd like to support this channel financially, please check out our links to Patreon and Coffee. If you'd like some of Lux's art for your own, please also check his page for commission availability. Thank you.